Delegation is a difficult skill to master. Perhaps you struggle to pass on tasks for fear that you aren't meeting your potential or fear that other people won't do as good a job. This is fair. We all want to be the best we can be. But the best managers know how to delegate tasks effectively for better team relationships and results on projects. Today, I want to go through some tips on how to delegate tasks effectively and make the most of the team around you. With these approaches, I'm sure it will all become a lot easier. Number 1. Know when to delegate Delegation only works if you're prepared to actually give something up and recognize when to do so. It can be tricky to admit that you can't do everything or are short on time because of a growing task list. You may have that drive to do everything you set out to achieve and push too hard. This can lead to unsatisfactory work, poor job satisfaction, and mental and physical burnout. When you start to feel that there is too much to handle, this is when you can pause and reassess your list. There has to be something on there you can give to other people. But what? Number 2. Determine your essential and exclusive tasks There are always going to be some tasks that are more important than others and that you simply can't give up. If you go through your list of tasks and see something you wouldn't dare give to someone else, go with that gut instinct. There will be tasks where it's essential that you take on the work, however much you dislike it or tedious it is. This could be because only you have the skill set or qualifications to complete it. Lower level employees or those in other departments may not achieve the same results. Or you might find that upper management insists that you are the one to complete something and put your name to the work. Perhaps because a client insisted on it or for the reputation of the business. In these cases, those tasks become priorities and we can consider them for delegation. But there are plenty of other tasks that we can move over. Number 3. Look at tasks you simply don't want to do This is something that I don't think enough people consider. A lot of the time, delegation tends to revolve around those tasks that are time sensitive or that don't play to our strengths. That's understandable. If there is a looming deadline or you really feel you aren't right for the job, you can look at passing it to someone that can handle it. However, other tasks get forgotten. These are the boring and unpleasant tasks you simply don't want to do. Now, I'm not saying you should say no to everything you don't fancy doing that day. You still have to be productive and work efficiently. But there will be times when the little tedious tasks sit on the back burner untouched for a while. You have tasks that are more important, time sensitive, or just more enjoyable, so you either work on those or procrastinate on the boring ones. There may be someone in your team that sees these little tasks from a different perspective. They might be keen to take on these smaller tasks as a change of pace from other projects, or may simply enjoy them. Therefore, the delegation of boring tasks to the right person gets them completed faster and you no longer have the frustration of thinking about them. The challenge here is finding that ideal person. Number 4. Finding the right person for the task There is always going to be someone that is a better fit for a specific assignment than others. Delegation of tasks can't be personal. If you give a task to someone and take one away from someone else, it should all come down to their professional strengths or the size of their to-do list. There will be some people that thrive on creative work and others that are brilliant with data entry and admin. Have a couple in mind too, as your first choice may be busy with something else and unable to commit to extra work. Number 5. Communicating your needs effectively Once you have the best candidates in mind, you need to communicate your needs as best you can for the right result. The more that your employee knows about a task and how to complete it to your standards, the better the chance of a great result the first time. If they do it wrong or someone else has to take over, you didn't save any time or effort in delegating. Detailed briefs are a great starting point, but remember that not all employees will respond well to big documents. Others will need a one-on-one -on -one discussion and a visual idea of what's expected. Try to work with everyone's needs and strengths. Number 6. Giving people a sense of purpose A great way to get your team on board with delegation is to communicate the purpose of the task. Too often, employees get told what they're expected to do and when, and that's it. Those that understand the importance of a task and the greater context within a project may be more inclined to put in their best work. They can then see how it related to the goals of the team more widely and to other work they may be responsible for. Number 7. Determining a suitable time frame 
Once your team members know exactly what's expected of them and why the task is so important, they need a strong time frame. Deadlines are both scary and comforting in equal measure. The benefit is that we have a clear finish line to aim for and aren't so likely to let the project fall behind. This can bring some structure and a level of importance to tasks too, which some low-level employees may lack. In turn, they can feel motivated and empowered to be a more productive team member. Of course, there's a little stress attached to deadlines if they start to creep up on us. A good trick here is to give your team members a sense of control over the situation. Rather than tell them the work has to be on your desk by 5 p.m. on Friday, ask them if they're okay with that or need longer. Your employee then has the choice and power to say yes, to negotiate for some extra time, or to communicate that they already have a lot to do by then. From there, you can decide on the next step. Either they get the task until the original deadline, you figure out a different time frame, or you go to someone else. Number 8. Keep those lines of communication open Communication is essential when delegating tasks to anyone within a team. Too often, managers will tell employees what needs doing and when to do it by, and then disappear to work on their own essential tasks. Instead, you need to ensure that there's a healthy line of communication both ways. You should be able to contact them and talk to them about your needs, with enough detail about the purpose, actions, and time frame needed for the task. This also means checking in with them midway to determine how things are progressing. At the same time, your staff also need to be able to come to you whenever they need to. If they have a question about your instructions or a problem arises, they should be able to come to your office or send an email or instant message with their concern. Then you can clarify what to do or work on a solution to an issue. This gives workers a sense of power in their role where they are responsible for moving the project forward and achieving results. Also, remember that there are no stupid questions or pointless visits. Just because you're busy or understand something perfectly, that doesn't mean that they can't have concerns or that they should feel cut off. Number 9. Make note of who you can rely on. Improving delegation skills and task sharing within a team takes time and practice. There may be times when you pass a task over to someone and they aren't able to follow your instructions or meet your deadline. Here you may need to find someone else that will put in the work to achieve your aims in the future. There may also be lower level employees that over deliver and show great enthusiasm when given extra tasks, even those tedious ones. You can make note of this and put them at the top of your list of candidates for similar tasks. Number 10. Take responsibility for your mistakes At the same time as evaluating others, be aware of personal responsibility with delegation. Those that fail to achieve a goal may not have had enough time or misunderstood the instructions. This could be because you didn't offer a chance to negotiate when to hand in the finished project or didn't provide adequate guidance on what you needed. Learn from any mistakes and strive to do better next time. Delegation is a team effort. The biggest takeaway I hope you get from all this is that delegation requires consideration and effort from both sides. You need people you can rely on with the right attitude and skills for the task at hand. But you also need to be ready to negotiate and communicate over time for the best results. With practice, you will build a stronger team that knows how to delegate tasks effectively. Thank you for watching. If this video has inspired you and you feel it will help your team, why not share it with them and really get everyone on the same page when it comes to delegation skills? And make sure to check out the next video right now where I show you how to get motivated even when you don't feel like it.